so in this case, we are going to have a continuation uh, as we are referring to the part of our statistics. Remember, we managed to work on the basics of a histogram as a revision. The frequency polygon is based on the information or the type of data that we used before as we had to draw the histogram. Remember, the information was taken from where? From the grouped data. That is where we are taking our information from. The same information or the same type is then used to represent or to draw the frequency polygon at the end. So as we have got the, the word on its own, guys, a polygon, it's a closed figure, a closed shape that we must have. So as a frequency polygon, we are going to have our graph in a manner, uh, something maybe you have got points that are being joined together, but we're going to have a closed figure, a closed shape. So the question is, how was this closed figure or closed shape obtained? How was it possible for us to have this closed figure? From the information that you be given of the grouped data or the grouped information there, Remember, you've got the class intervals where you are given different classes from one point to another. So using that information that you are given, you are going to be working with the class centers this time. This time, you are working with class centers. Remember, we had a condition previously we had a condition previously. When we had to draw the histogram, we used the classes as they are. But this time, we need the class center, which is the class midpoint in between the class of 5 and 10, in between. Remember, the midpoint or class center, we talked about how to determine this from the lower class plus upper class over 2. So you must have class centers on the classes here what you are using on the classes there are the class centers so you must have the mid points you are working with the mid points versus the frequency midpoint frequency from what we have the frequency is already given The frequency is already given. There is no adjustment there. Just find your class centers. So that is uh, uh, the distribution uh, that, uh, that we are going to have. So just going to look into one or two of the examples. But what you need there are the class midpoints. So meaning to say the midpoint versus frequency. Mark a point. You mark a point. You mark a point from what you are given. But you're going to notice that from the information that you'll be given, you are starting from a certain point, which is on top like this, ending at a certain point, which is on top, which makes the shape not to be closed. It will be like this. In no normal consideration, you'll be having a shape like this. All right. You'll be having something like this. From the information that you're given. But what you're supposed to have is a closed figure. It must be a closed shape. So the question is, how are we going to have this point, which is a midpoint, and also another midpoint from what we are not given? Since the classes that we are given are of the same width, just like what we saw on a histogram. Remember, we talked of the classes that are of the same width. So it therefore follows that you use the same consideration of 
how the intervals were in terms of the classes. You determine the midpoint before the midpoint of the class, the midpoint of class before the given information, before the given data, just before. So if we were given our information like this from 60 to 70, there is a frequency there. There's a frequency there of 12. It is not at zero. We must have our graph starting from the ground at zero. So if it is not like that, you create a class before this, before this 60 to 70. In the same manner, as you can see, there's a difference of 10 throughout, 70 to 80, 80 to 90. They will give you same differences. So meaning to say, you just notice, okay, if I'm at 60, meaning to say the class that was before was supposed to be what? X is greater than or equal to 50, but less than this number where I am starting from according to the given information, I'm starting at 60. So that will be our end class so that we can start at 60 from the given data. But it must have a frequency of zero so that it can start at zero. So this is where I'm saying on that class, which is the class before, you determine the midpoint, which is the class set. This is the class before. From what we have on our data. You create another class, which is before that, uh, that is, that is its midpoint is the one that we are going to mark here versus a frequency of what? Versus a frequency of zero so that it can be a closed figure on this part. The same thing on the end, because you won't be given that at zero. As you can see from the information that will be given, be at a certain value, the last class, so you must create the next class, the after one. From what we are given, you create that. You find its midpoint. So this point here will be the midpoint of the class, the midpoint of class after, after the given date, after the given date. At the end of our given data, after the, at the end, this is the last part. So it follows that the next class that we are going to be having, having same class width of 10 units in between. We are going to start from what? 140. So X will be greater than or equal to 140. Less than 10 plus 140, which is what? 150. But the frequency corresponding there must be what? Zero. So that it will be a closed figure for that midpoint that you're going to calculate. When you join to this, it will be at the ground. So therefore, a closed shape is produced. So those are the concepts, guys, that you're going to need when working with what? A frequency polygon. It must be a closed shape. So the, those are the major concepts. So we're going to plot the midpoint of each group against frequency, all right? So you said plot the midpoints, plot the midpoints of each group, each group against frequency. Okay? That is the major part. Then uh, we, where there is this part, I also add this one. You have to plot uh, these midpoints of the group before and after each group or to secure the polygon, to have a closed uh, polygon. So this part and this part, it is part of these. So you have those ones at the end, which is after the given data and before the given data. So with those points, you must join each point. 
because you are forming points, 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 and points. So you join each point using a ruler. You can join these points using a ruler. So it follows that this area that is enclosed by the polygon, covered by the polygon, and the horizontal axis, that enclosed area is equal to the total area of the histogram. If we were having a histogram, the total area of that histogram is equal to the part that you'll be having of the polygon. If, let's say, a histogram was being drawn here, its area is the same as the total area that is covered by the what? By the polygon. So you can say the area enclosed, the area enclosed by the polygon, the area enclosed by the polygon will equal to the total area, to the total area of the histogram. Area of the histogram. So in actual sense, the histogram and the frequency polygon, they work hand in hand, right? So that is the concept, guys. Just direct is that these are points that you're marking, then you join those points. So given information as this one, a traffic official records the speed at which vehicles travel on a road on a certain day in a frequency table. So this is the information that we're given. And out of this information, the question was, draw a frequency polygon to represent these data. Draw a frequency polygon. Guys, from the same table, same information, this one, the question can ask you to draw a histogram. Remember, we're dealing with grouped data. A histogram can be drawn from this. Even a cumulative frequency curve and ogive can be drawn. But in this case, they said what? Frequency polygon. So know what is it that you need. Midpoints. And what? The frequency. So we are going to need the midpoints of each and every, each, 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 each class. Each and every class that we are given. Not forgetting those other two classes that I mentioned before, the one before 50 to 60. With a, with a, with a frequency of zero there, we are going to have their class centers. All right, so let me just add... Uh, a column here for the class centers, which is the, the midpoints. All right. So that is the concept there. All right. Then there's going to be the last part there. So it's going to be a column there. Okay. So these are midpoints. Remember, how do you determine your midpoints? Lower class. Class, the upper class, you divide by two. So the first one, which we added, which was not part of our information or part of the data, from 50 to 60, you add 50 plus 60, then divide by two. That is the concept. Each and every class. So that is going to be 55. From what we are given, we have got 55 as uh, the midpoint. Then we move on. 60 to 70. You do the same thing. 60 plus 70 over 2. So that was going to be 65. The same thing. Uh, 75, 85, 95, 105, then 115, 125, 135 according to lower class plus upper class divided by 2. Then from 140 to 150, the one that we added, it was not there. But remember, we want a closed figure. That's why we are having a frequency of what? Of 0. So it's class 
uh, center or the midpoint will be 140 plus 150 divided by 2. That's uh, 145. We have versus a frequency of what? Of zero. So this is the information that you're going to need. You have to extend the table. So using these midpoints and the frequencies, the number of vehicles, that is our frequency, we can have our graph. So all you just need is to plot, mark the points 55 versus 0. The first one. 55 versus a 0. So you mark a point 55 versus a 0 according to the graph that you'll be given. All right? The other one. 65 versus 12. You mark your points where 65 is and 12 is according to the scale that you're given and so on and so on. You mark all the points. 75 versus 18. This one versus this. You mark each and every point on your graph. And not forgetting the last class that we added, 145 versus 0 at the end. You mark all the points. And we are supposed to join these points to formulate a frequency polygon. With a ruler, this graph can be drawn. Joining each point from this one to this. Okay? From this point and this point, we join the two. We join. All right? Something like this. We join our points. A closed shape is going to be formed a closed figure a closed shape is going to be formed that's a frequency polygon so there we used what mid points versus the frequency you have to mark Whatever that you have, you mark a point where it is corresponding. You mark a point where it is corresponding. It must be a closed figure. So be very careful about these two points. At the start and at the end, the ones that we adjusted on our table there. You must make adjustment, adjustments. So this is how these questions are given. Let us uh, revise as uh, many questions as we can, as we are preparing ourselves for the exams, which are ahead of time where we do not understand. You can even ask the questions. Uh, you can join these groups, uh, this one for grade eight to 12, and also uh, the one for Maison African Motives. Make sure that you join the WhatsApp group so that you'll be able to ask any of the questions in mind that you do not understand. And also to join uh, the membership so that we do not miss any of the classes explanations that are necessary for our preparations uh, till our examinations.